Step number three, accept what you want. I hope that it's very clear at this point that when you reach the manifestation stage and start taking larger and larger steps, eventually you get to where you're going. You get to the end point of your vision. Unfortunately, a lot of people trip themselves up with the law of attraction. They can see their desires materializing during the manifestation stage, however, they don't get around to claiming it. They doubt it. They say to themselves, well, I just got lucky, or, well, what do you know, it's working, but it is going to be permanent. What if it, this is just a one-time thing? What if somebody was just helping me out and doing things out of their kindness of their heart? And on and on it goes. The bottom line is, they don't claim it. Instead, they doubt it and think that it isn't real. And the worst part to all of this is that, at the back of their heads, they feel they just got lucky and, ultimately, they don't deserve it. How sad. Seriously, it's like going on a journey of a thousand miles and by the time you get to your final destination, you say to yourself, well, this is not what I expected. Or, I'm at the wrong spot, I'll go back. Pathetic. And this is precisely the kind of game a lot of people play. Now, it's sad because those people are actually a tiny fraction of the ones that started the journey. Most people don't even get to this stage. It really is quite troubling that when that surviving fraction of strivers and seekers make it to the stage, they somehow, some way, sabotage themselves. You have to accept what you want. Accept it mentally by saying to yourself and proving to yourself that you deserve it. It's not like something handed you that job you got you in that corner office. It's not like somebody, out of their kindness of their heart, threw you a freebie and gave you a multi-million dollar contract. Accept the fact that you put in the work. It took planning, it took vision, it took sacrifice. Also, accept it emotionally. Say to yourself, I'm worthy. Sure, other people may be smarter than me, they may be more driven than me, they may be more connected, but they failed. I got this. I am worthy. I am good enough. This is me. Act like one who has accepted the reality of what you desire. Understand that this is not a one-off thing. Understand that your vision became real precisely because you have changed inside. This is just the last part. This is actually just the icing on the cake. You have manifested the change that you have chosen inside. It's all purposeful. It's all by control. And you did it. So accept this reality. Accept your power to affect this reality because you did not engage in some sort of black magic. You did not cheat people. You did not use some sort of magical field that transformed you. No, you changed your mindset, you changed your attitude. You went from somebody who kept saying, I don't have the money, to somebody who keeps saying, how can I afford that? What do I need to do? Do you see the difference? Accept that reality that you desire has become real. Recognize the steps to get you to where you are. Don't fear them. Don't dismiss them in your mind saying, oh, these are one-time things. They're not going to happen again. I just got lucky. I'm telling you. If you want the law of attraction to become real in your life, and most importantly, to become a tool that would enable you to unlock the unstoppable winner that you truly are, you have to stop believing in luck. You make your own luck. You start making your own luck when you start thinking a certain way. You change the direction of the fortune in your life when you start changing how you deal with your emotions. Recognize the step that got to your vision and don't fear them. Don't think that as you go through this process that you jinx it. That somehow, some way, you are setting in motion a process that prevents you from repeating the same results. Just accept it. Feel good about it. And here's the secret. And it really blew my mind the first time I did this. I looked at the positive thing that has happened. And I associated it with my changed attitude, emotions and actions. It's hard to do this the first time around. But the more you achieve the result that you desire, the clearer things become and you are able to make the association stick. But you need to make it stick so you would reach a point where you start to only start thinking about certain things and feeling certain things, and you know that you can take the necessary actions. There is no resistance there anymore. It doesn't seem like you're going out on a limb or you're trying something completely untested and unproven. In fact, this might become second nature to you, that you just jump in with both feet. It becomes clear from the get-go. Create an upward spiral of reinforcing actions. When you create a positive association with the reality of your vision, again, it has become real. 
and with your interventions and your plans and your emotional state, you can create an upward spiral of reinforcing associations. In fact, if you do this right, it becomes almost unbreakable. Act on your dream. Here's how you do it. First, you act on your dream. You achieve it. You've done it before. You can do it again. So do it. Once you have achieved the results, or even if you have achieved any result, feel good about it. Make it burn. Make it stand out in your mind. Feel it intensely. Desire that positive feeling again. Next, after some time has passed, desire that positive feeling again. Be so motivated by the positive feeling that you act out your dream again. And then when things happen, feel good about the results. Make it intense. And keep repeating this process until you become motivated by the positive feeling you get when you act out your dreams. This enables you to have the power that you need to remove limiting beliefs. I'm telling you, as much as our parents loved us, they are also the first sources of our limiting beliefs. Now, granted, as a parent, it's very practical and understandable as to why parents do this. If I did not tell my child that putting his or her hand over the stop fire is not going to burn them, they probably would end up harming themselves, not necessarily with fire, but with something else. But the more our parents train us to not do things or to hold back, the more they start chipping away our spirit. So you have to recapture some of that and reshape it. Transform it from the limiting beliefs that hold you back to positive guidance that keeps you out of trouble, but at the same time, give you enough freedom and latitude to live a more effective life. The same goes with emotional habit. Regardless, focus on what you achieve. Accept that you can achieve in the future and that you have achieved in the past and focus on the fact that you can change things for the better. Once you have this, then you can compare your negative beliefs versus what you achieved. And if you do this right, you start chipping away on your negative beliefs. Now they're not entirely going to go away because, like I said, some of them are useful. But just like a lot of the things that we've picked up from our childhood, it's very easy to just layer on insecurities, fears, guilt, remorse, and all sorts of toxic emotions until we don't know which is which. By thinking purposely using the law of attraction, you start wearing all this down until you are left with a bare necessities and everything else is gone, and this gives you tremendous freedom.